Engineering is hard work that involves a lot of thinking. Aerospace and systems engineering in particular deals with a lot of big systems that come together. Understanding big systems takes quite a bit of skill, and thankfully a lot of this skill can be acquired along the way. Let's break some of the big ones down. The first and most crucial skill you're gonna need is passion. Don't go into an engineering discipline just because you were told it's the only way. Do it because it's something that you're passionate about. It can be hard to be sure of yourself and your passions, especially if you've got people with your best interest in mind that are opinionated about the way that you should achieve your successes. The only person that you need to agree with for your path in life is you. Are you interested in air and space? If the answer is yes, go into aerospace. Take that and visualize a life that'll make you happy. Being passionate will help all of these other things fall into line. You gotta believe in yourself. It's normal to have doubts, but don't let those doubts cripple you. Don't let them fool you into thinking that you deserve anything less than success. There's a Japanese term called Ikigai, which is a philosophy about finding your purpose in life. Does it bring benefit to the world? Are you getting paid for it? Are you good at it? Or can you be good at it? And do you enjoy it? That is the crux of your icky guy. I'll do another video on this in the future, but for now, we'll move on to the second skill. The second big skill you'll need is math. Without math, you don't get science and you don't get engineering. Throughout your degree and maybe in your career, you're going to be doing a lot of math. Complex problem solving is the foundation of engineering. There's a lot of really powerful software out there these days, so your career field might not necessarily involve doing a lot of math in the day to day, but understanding how it applies to the engineering discipline and understanding that foundation of problem solving is imperative for engineering success. Not too much else to say there. So the third skill is being diplomatic yet having educated opinions while you're on a team. This is an interesting one. Engineering is all about teamwork and it's all about collaboration and integration. There's a point where you have to be diplomatic and understanding, but there is also a point where you need to be firm with your educated opinions. It's what makes a valuable team member. Let me elaborate. Say you're speaking with someone from another team, asking them about what they would like to see on a product, but you notice something. You notice that one of these deliverable nice-to-haves either can't be met or will prevent the production of the product. You've got to build up your case and diplomatically stand firm on what you believe. A lot of engineering is negotiation, contracts, requirements, deciding what things are nice to have and what things are actually needed. Oftentimes, engineering decisions like these are made in forums called engineering review boards. It's important to set a goal to get to a point where you have a justifiable opinion in your career. Having an opinion and being able to convey this opinion and work with others to implement or refine it is the crux of good engineering. There is another side of this though. The other side of this is being held accountable. It'll tie into my follow-up point here soon, but the idea is that knowledge is malleable. You're gonna learn things along the way, and it's very important to take those things that you learn and apply them. The ability to take accountability and ownership of an aspect of engineering is pretty key to this. Sometimes you're wrong, but sometimes you're right. It's all about the nuance and cooperating to make a decision. The fourth skill I wanna talk about here is learning from failure. The windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. I've talked about this pretty extensively in another video, but failing is the key to success in engineering. You wanna fail hard and you wanna fail fast. And learn from your mistakes so that when it really matters, when you're the person society looks to in order to solve problems, you're able to put on your critical thinking hat and solve those problems. Get used to failing. It'll happen regardless of how smart you are or how good you are at math. You gotta learn how to fail. Check out the video in the description below for more on this. The fifth skill I want to talk about here is to understand the way engineering fits into society. When you go into engineering, you have a silent pact with society to be a frontline innovator and generate value. The reason I bring this up is to convince people not to just do it for the money. This point isn't really even about passion. Some of the largest engineering disasters stem from neglect. In a field like engineering, lackadaisical decision-making can have very large consequences. Take the Challenger disaster, for example. I have a short documentary up on this where I dissect the poor decision-making that went into that disaster. But the point I want to make there is that bad decisions were made, good engineering was ignored, 
and lives are lost. Or more recently, we'll take Boeing's failures on the 737 MAX, where profits and stakeholders were prioritized over engineering decisions. Even one faulty component can have a huge impact on the final product. Think about the product you're designing. Would you as a consumer feel comfortable using that product? This is something that is critical to systems engineering thinking where it's imperative to follow rigorous processes to mitigate a system. And the last skill we're gonna talk about here is discipline. To take on a field this intricate and difficult, you need to develop a strong sense of discipline. This comes from understanding your habits and the way you are as a person. Based on this, you wanna get good at managing your time and the way you use it. I have videos up on this on my channel, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into time management. On that note, crafting and honing discipline is an art form, and it's not easy. It takes time, and sometimes it takes harsh wake-up calls. An example I can give is from my undergrad. Discipline and time management were some of the things I was worst at. In fact, I didn't get good at this until after college. Something I found that is tremendously helpful is finding one linchpin aspect during your day, independent of your engineering field, to structure everything around. For me, that was my health. I started taking my fitness seriously and prioritizing everything around it. And naturally, every aspect of my day fell in line. And I developed a lot more mental clarity alongside a powerful routine to get really good at my job. Discipline looks different for everyone. And the core tenet of this is to get as much value out of yourself as you can. No one enjoys doing hard work, but no one is ever satisfied from doing no work at all. Sharpen the body, sharpen the mind. So to sum it all up, there are a lot of skills you'll need to be an aerospace engineer or a systems engineer or just an engineer in general for any discipline. A lot of these skills you'll gain on the fly, but in order to get the plethora of skills and knowledge required, you have to master certain things to build a comfortable baseline. To this day, I practice what I preach, and it's what makes me successful as a rocket engineer now. And if you need help with setting a solid baseline for your engineering success, my one-on-one -on -one coaching program is live, and I am taking applicants now. There's a link for that in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys and gals. If you got something from this video, hit the like button below, subscribe if you want to see more. Just to preview some of the other content coming up in this channel, I'll be bringing in more documentaries and I'll be starting to lean into a lot more of the recreation side of the channel. It's going to start featuring things like travel logs or really focusing on bringing cinematic content into the frame and challenging me as a creator. So I'm very excited. And with that, I will see you guys at the next video.